Rob. The extra, the extra um, thing that you can do here, and you're being asked to investigate, is to how uh, um, this software will. So if you select you got and then in that you're not interested in the positive and negative rectangle methods in the trapeze. So if I if I Okay, step okay, and then we can decide how many divisions using this number. I'm going to this down here. If we then um, go back, so if I undo that and repeat the um, effect, what you can do is investigate different numbers of divisions. So let's pick eight divisions. Oh. between 0 and 20. Error, smaller each time. You get three or four different numbers of division. See where, find out where adding more mathematical method, you've got data points between 0 and 20 and they're every two, so I think you've got 10 divisions there that you're using mathematically. You've seen what you can find out here what 5 divisions do, what 10 divisions do, what 15 divisions do and so on. You can do the same with um, Simpson's rule. So if I just take that back again and we look at, for in instance, if we do Simpson's rule on five divisions to 20, you'll see how much better the because actually fit in a parabola to the to the curve at the top. And if I zoom in even quite close down here, there's little indication of any kind of error. Yeah. So with Simpson's rule, you're likely to lead, need to use less divisions to get closer to your function. Of course, that all depends on how you put between divisions, then you could, you could get a significant error. It just depends on what the function is. Okay? So that's what they will allow you to do. One other thing um, that uh, isn't part of the assignment and I'm not expecting you and don't really want you to do at this stage but you can actually take the data and take the data point. Now I've got the t data point selected now. Right click that and say best fit. 
what it then does is it asks the gravitational curve would be said we a, a cubic to it something. So let's have a look. Will a cubic fit? Three. So that's the closest fit you can get with a cubic function to that data set. And then uh, uh, the menu results box. That's the cubic function. So we plus that x squared minus terminal plus set or will work we all what is best fit. But I I've about whether whether a cube um so is everybody happy with in you doing the practice than in this room. Alright? So if you miss next week, you're in trouble. It's done to you time to So, moving on. To what we've with uh, solid works. Now on um, your, you should have, when you go to your computers, access to the network drive. Okay. On that network drive, there is um, a folder with my name on it. Okay. And inside there is a folder called Advanced Maths Loading Exercise. All right. It's that set. That folder set up as. Um, read only. So what you need to do, not right now, but when you're ready to have a go at this, is copy that folder and put it somewhere where you can use it. So you've got your own copy of it. Okay? You all happy with that? So I'm going to do that now. Just copy that and I'm going to put it on my um, removable disk. I already got it there once. I don't want to merge it. Let's put it somewhere else. Let's put it in here. Oh, no, 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 I'll do.
start this up. Now we've got the simulation tab up. If, we, if I click on it, the only thing that's available at the moment is this thing that says study advisor. The best not to put the advisor up. I keep asking you questions about what you want to do. The best to just follow the way I'm going to do it. So if you click that downward arrow and click new study, because you can have um, several studies in 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 the same file at the same time. Okay, it opens up a new study. So I'm going to I'll I'm going to leave mine at study one. You can give it a name if you want to. Um, that's entirely up to you. We're going to be doing what's called a static analysis. So that's set, and that's the default anyway. So I'm going to leave that at that and tick the box to set that up. What you then get is a new um, tree similar to the tree you get up here regarding the assembly but based on a study. We've got another number of things we need to set up so that the study um, works. First of all, we need to rotate. So if you hold down um, the wheel on the mouse, you can rotate around. And what we want to do is set fixtures. So I want to right select that base, right click fixtures, and say fix geometry. Okay. That face is the one selected in this box. And you see the little green um, arrows on there. And by default, the, the um, item, that, what we're saying is that base is going to be fixed in all three planes, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And that gives you an indication of what you're doing there. You're fixing that selected surface in every plane but allowing all the other bits to move under load. Okay? It's possible to say, I want it to be fixed in X and Y, but allowed to move in Z. You can fix it in one plane, two, or three. Okay? We, we, we need it, that to be, there's no ass bolted to the wall, and nothing's going to move it. Once we've done that, we tick to say, we're finished. We've done our fixture. All right. The next thing we want to do is apply our external load. So I'm going to click the top end of that boss there, right click external loads and say force. Okay. We can do a, 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 a linear force, so we could, we could, if we wanted to, do a torque. We don't want a torque. Um, what we do want to do is put a load of 15,000 newtons on that face. Okay. If you click away from that box, you should get some arrows that show you the direction of that force downwards, which is what we want. If they were if they're the wrong way up, you would click. Um, ch oh no, hang on. You'd choose reverse direction, and that would be like pulling upwards from that from that face. Okay. We don't we want downwards anyway, so leave it as it is. Everything else is default. Click OK. So we've got our fixtures on the back. We've got our load on the front. The last thing we've got to do before we can actually run an analysis is mesh our model, which is what it, what meshing is is us breaking um, the the fabric of the model up into lots of little trapeziums that are not analyzers. So it breaks it up into 3D sections that are triangulated, if you like. Okay, and you can have you can make your mesh really coarse. You can make your mesh really fine. We're going to leave the mesh in default kind of middle setting. If you make your mesh coarse, your analysis will take less time to complete, but is likely to be less accurate. If you make a really fine mesh, then your analysis could take a long time, 
but your results are going to be more reliable. So it's about balance. And, and in advanced situations, it's possible to select certain areas to mesh really finely, where you're expecting or needing more detailed analysis, whereas other areas can be a, a much wider mesh. So we're not going to go to that level, but it is possible to set what, uh, different meshes in different areas of the model. So what we want to do is right-click mesh and say create mesh. You then get a dialog box up again. There's a slider here for course to find. We're going to keep it. I recommend you keep it in the middle anyway. Don't play around with that. Okay. Um, and then, so essentially, all I want is the default mesh. I'm going to tick. It takes a short time to do that meshing. There we go. That's done. So when you get a load of triangles all over the front of your front and every part of your um, object, then you know the mesh is complete. We're now ready to go to get results of of um, some analyses. Okay. So that are the three things you've got to set up. You've got to set your mesh up. You've got to set your load up. And you've got to set some kind of fixture at least somewhere on your object. Okay. Then what we can do is uh, run. That's right. Run the analysis. Material not defined. I knew there was going to be something I hadn't done. We need to set the material. Uh, where do I do that? Define material somewhere. Apply materials to all. Yeah. Alloy, the default alloy steel is all I want you to do. Okay? Apply. Those. Notice now both parts are alloy steel, and now we are ready to go. So I click on run. Something will happen in a minute. It says it's solvent. Can take a little while. Having said that, I don't think that was that long last time we pretty quickly. All right. Done. Yeah, here we go. Once that's finished, okay, you get your results um, down here in this results tree. So. What we're looking at here now is stress. Newton meters squared. Right, now, what I will say is it shows you how the, the general uh, um, direction any kind of movement is in. But it exaggerates it. As you'll see in a minute when we look at displacement, that piece there looks a lot more bent than it actually is. It exaggerates that so you can see the direction. But the color coding indicates red areas of highest stress, okay, to blue areas of lowest stress. So you can see where the really high stress is concentrated here. Don't forget to look underneath, okay. Well, we've got a maximum stress of 340 million six hundred and fourteen thousand four hundred newtons per meter squared in that red area going through all the other colors down to blue okay and the key thing is for you would be to get the different results for the different versions of bracket 
and you're looking at really you're interested in the maximum aren't you a minimum and how do they compare for, for the different types that you're going to analyze the second um, result that you can do if you double click is, dif is displacement again it goes from blue least displacement to red maximum displacement 2.346 e to the power of nothing 2.346 millimeters so the tip of that is going to bend under this load by 2.36 millimeters yep again you're looking for comparisons and then the last one that comes up by default is the strain. Again, maximum strain where it's red, least strain where it's blue, and so on. Okay. Strain being a ratio, if I remember rightly. Your guys are probably more clued up mechanically today than I am. But strain is it, is, is it not some kind of ratio between two values, I think? Anyway. All right. Again, you're interested in how do the different versions of the bracket compare? And if you're loading it differently, try and find out how much load it will take. What is the maximum? All right. You can get a lot of data off this. But... What do you what 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 is it that you need, and how are you going to present it? All right, the pictures are nice, but it's the numbers that we can use for a comparison. Okay, yes, the colours give you a general indication of the spread of strain as well, but the numbers are the key thing. All right, now with that, with that, well, the last thing we want to do is look at factor of safety. You're being asked to analyze this um, bracket in terms of it being able to take 15,000 newtons to a factor of safety of five. Yep. So there's two different types of um, factor of safety plot you can do. We need to right click or click factor of safety plot. Now, when these dialog boxes come up, sometimes there's arrows at the top here that aren't obvious, and that means there's more than one page to the dialog box. On the first page, or first step of this dialog box, we don't need to do anything. On the second one, we don't need to do anything. But the last one, two things you can do. The first one I'm going to do is a factor safety distribution. It's going to show the distribution of factor of safety. So from the lowest factor of safety to the highest. Again, it does that with color. So if I tick that, I get a factor of safety distribution where the red areas would only conform or have a factor of safety of 1.82. Okay? Not very good. when we're looking for a factor of safety of five. It's quite obvious this bracket isn't going to conform. Right? The other factor of safety thing we can do, I'm going to click that again, define a new, another factor of safety. Oh, again, go to the third page. But this time, I'm going to look to get it to show me areas that are below a factor of safety of five, the area we're looking for. It'll only give me two colours now. Blue is safe for a factor of safety of five. Red isn't. Yep. That's what that means. So we can now see which areas are the key areas of issue with regard to that being able to take that load to a factor of safety of five. So that's how to do the analysis. If you click, um, now, the other group, 
found something somewhere with regards to results where you can automatically get a Word document with lots of pictures in it and lots of information. I didn't even bother to ask them where. I might have been here actually. Create. No, there is one. All I would say about that if you find it is there's lots and lots and lots of detail and numbers and pictures in that automatically created file, a lot of which are not relevant to what I'm asking you for in the assignment. So yes, by all means, find it and use it, but you need to take out the information that is relevant to the assignment. Okay? It creates it in a report format, puts pictures in boxes with data beside them, but is that what you need? Is that the information you need? Is all I would say. And I'm going to say no more about that. Lastly, I'm just going to show you um, the other files. You've got an assembly um, with a web on the bottom. So knowing that this area above and below is an area of issue with regard to factor safety of five, I thought as a not a very good mechanical engineer by the mind, but what an electrician might do as an engineer, let's stick a web underneath and see what that does. Right? So that's a, a second iteration of the bracket that you can analyze and see what that does. Okay? And then lastly, you've got one with two webs. So, again, being a silly old electrician, that still wasn't good enough. Let's put another web on top and see if that helps. Okay, so that's another um, iteration that you can have a look at. Now, you might have the solid work skills, but I don't know that you've got the time to go and make any kind of modifications to that model, nor do I know if you've got the words available to you within this assignment report to do so. Remember what it is here, it's, it's the mathematical use of this software to do a complex analysis that you couldn't, you won't stand very much chance of doing on, um, on a piece of paper with a pencil, okay? So it's about what you can get from it rather than redesigning that bracket. If you have any ideas that you want to put in your conclusion, that might get round the issues, and you've got enough words, then by all means do so. But it's really about the mathematical process being gone through here, and what results can you get from it. Is everybody happy with that situation and what they've got to do? Yeah? Because now, the rest of the time this week, and next week, is there for you to carry out that process and the other stuff that we talked about this morning. Right. Good.